Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Chamber Connects. Uh, just as a reminder, as always, we are recording this morning's program and we'll post it for viewing a little bit later on on the Chamber's YouTube channel. Uh, and we'll also be posting it on uh, a link to on our Facebook page, as well as uh, our friends over at Delhi Telephone Company will be broadcasting it on the uh, their local one channel. So uh, in a few minutes, we're going to connect this morning with Assemblyman Brian Miller. And if you have some questions for the Assemblyman, please post them uh, in the chat box. But before we're joined by Brian, uh, let me just update you on a few things that the Chamber has been doing. As I mentioned last month, uh, the printed version of our travel guide is now available. And again, it's rather than the typical endless list of that most guides uh, use, ours is more of an experiential guide to, to our many assets, an experiential guide really to Delaware County. In a lot of ways, it's, it's really a lifestyle publication and frankly can it assist you in your recruitment and onboarding efforts. So stop by, email us, call us if you want a box or 1,500 boxes uh, to, to share um, both with your, your customers and your staffs and prospective staffs. Second, I'm, I'm really excited to tell you that the, the chamber was just awarded a grant from the Rural Health Network uh, to develop ideas for a micro transit system for Delaware County. Uh, this is not yet public knowledge. You're the first, very first people outside of the organization that, that, um, that know about this. It, it's what we propose is really a, a significant shift, I think, from past efforts uh, in that we're gonna focus our attention on the transportation needs of employers and employees. And we expect broad participation from businesses, uh, support agencies, agencies that work with people in recovery, government and other interested stakeholders. So stay tuned, we'll be talking about more ways uh, that you all can get involved in that, in that what I think is gonna be a really exciting, exciting program, project. Um, also, um, June 9th is our spring golf tournament, our Business Links golf tournament. Uh, it will be held at the College Golf Course in Delhi. Uh, foursome is, is just $300. That includes uh, greens fees, cart, dinner following by, at the Bluestone uh, restaurant there at the golf course, uh, prizes, contests, a lot of, a lot of fun. And, and most importantly, I think in a lot of ways, really invaluable networking with um, other, other business uh, leaders in the, in the county. So I hope you think about um, fielding a team, uh, invite a couple of your uh, customers to, to join. Maybe even invite a couple business owners who are not currently members of the chamber uh, to be on, on your foursome. And of course, as always, um, you know, with this ever-changing news affecting businesses out of Albany uh, and Washington, we've gone, uh, at least here at the chamber and at a lot of the offices of the business center, we've gone maskless now in accordance with New York State guidelines and CDC guidelines. But having that reliable and accurate information that you can use for your business is, is always important, but I think never more so than, than right now. And the chamber really is your one source for assistance, for ideas, for inspiration, and nowadays, especially the facts. So if you're not already a member, I encourage you to join. Uh, membership, I think, is truly an investment in your business that you're going to use every single day. So information about membership, chamber news, registration for events, um, ideas, and the like, all at DelawareCounty.org. Delaware so it's my pleasure to introduce to you my friend, uh, Assemblyman Brian Miller, uh, to you this morning. Assemblyman M Miller represents the 101st Assembly District 
uh, in the New York State Assembly, that in Delaware County, that includes the towns of Davenport, Meredith, Delhi, Hamden, Bovina, and Andes. If you think about that on the map, it just kind of snakes through the center part of the, of the county. Uh, Brian and his team are familiar faces. There you go. Thank you, Brian. Yes, that is one ugly looking district. Yep, it's kind of a rough map, but it gives you a good idea of uh, what the 101st looks like. And Brian is a familiar face to, to many of us here in Delaware County as a, and during his, uh, during his time in the assembly uh, has proven to be a, a good friend to the small business community. Brian was elected, let me tell you a little bit about Brian. Brian was elected to the assembly in 2016 during that time, he's worked to reduce taxes and unfunded mandates to over, overhaul the Common Core Education Standards, eliminate the restraints of the SAFE Act, as well as to increase employment opportunities and mental health services for our veterans. Prior to joining the Assembly, Brian served as an Oneida County legislator. That's up toward the, toward the Utica area, if those of you who aren't familiar with Oneida County, uh, and eight years prior to that as the Bridgewater Town Supervisor. He currently serves on the Assembly Committees for Agriculture, Consumer Affairs and Protection, Environmental Conservation, Real Property Taxation, and Transportation. Brian, thanks for joining us this morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's always a pleasure to uh to talk with everybody down there. Yes, and we are. We are good friends. Uh, Delaware County uh, is, is one of my, Delhi and Delaware County is one of my favorite parts of the, the district. Uh, you guys, I showed you a, a, a good picture of the district. It goes from New Hartford, New York, over to Little Falls and straight down from, from there through Otsego County, Delaware County, Ulster County, all the way down the Orange County, and then uh, I have one town in Sullivan County. So I always tell everybody, if you want to learn how to be an effective uh, New York State legislature, legislator, the 101st District uh, gives you everything from uh, Central New York issues to uh, the Central Catskill issues to the Hudson Valley, and uh, you know we touch on the MTA. So you know when we when we look at bills and we vote on bills, we can really truly vote globally here in New York State, and, you know, to make a to make a good decision. Well, thank you, Brian, for that. Um, it, it's 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 certainly an interesting time right now in Albany. Um, the legislature a couple months ago passed a budget that includes a 12 billion dollars of, of that included 12 billion dollars of one time aid from the federal government yet still increases taxes by $4 billion here in New York State. Um, while this, you know, this doesn't really seem like it's a sustainable um, budget for a lot of people, what are your thoughts on the state budget? Well, it's a $212 billion budget. It's the, it's the largest budget that uh, New York State has ever had. Uh, you know, there's uh, some good things in it. There were some bad things in it. Of course, like all budgets, um, you know, there's there's a lot of uh, one one shot federal aid here, and uh, you know, I, can't, I I think we kind of went on a spending spree with with a lot of this. Uh, you know, there was 23 billion dollars uh, in, in federal aid after you uh, counted everything for the state and uh, all the local governments, uh -huh. and there was another additional uh, 6.8 billion in taxes. Um, but, you know, there's, there's programs there that need to be done and, uh, you know, maybe, maybe moving on coming off this COVID pandemic, uh, you know, this is going to help us get things rolling, but uh, we just got to remember these, these numbers aren't maintainable and we're going to have to pay our debts and get things going. You know, there are some good things here. Uh, there's more money in the, uh, for the roads, which are all important to all of us. Uh, you know, we're talking about the uh, the chamber travel guide, which we picked up some about three weeks ago. I'm going to go off yeah. a little tangent here. And, uh, you know, we want people going to Delaware County to enjoy the uh, uh, the fine restaurants and the shops and, 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 and all the friend, friendly people there and all the unique things. 
So, you know, we got them here in the you know, Hartford district office. And we also have them down in Wallkill in our other district office. Because we want people out and about and visiting our shops and stimulating, stimulating our small, small business economy. But back to the taxes, um, I don't like to see new taxes. I think we can do things uh, a lot more conservatively. You know, I was a town supervisor. I was yeah. a county legislator for many years. So I bring that local government experience uh, to Albany. And I, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I hope and wish we can get more guys that, that, that have that. Um, but, you know, unfunded mandates, we keep on passing things down. You know, they always, uh, you know, the bill will come out, there'll be a budget bill, and there'll be uh, no physical, fiscal implications. Well, there's always fiscal implications. I mean, not to the state, but it could be to uh, the chambers or the local businesses yeah. or, you know, and that's, that's the kind of crazy things we, we've done. Uh, there was more money in the budget for, uh, for, for education, which is a, a great thing. Um, you know, the, I'm a father of a 16 year old who, who will be studied 100 years from now as the COVID generation. And how did they deal with, uh, with virtual learning? So there's more monies there. But you know, this is just a one shot deal. And a lot of these uh, federal rescue dollars are going to be gone within three years. So hopefully, we can maintain what we did. And, and, and we can't increase any taxes here. It's just absolutely crazy. Well, Brian, let's let's talk about small business. You 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 mentioned you just mentioned that you're you were a small business owner. Uh, you know the challenges that small business owners face here, and particularly in upstate New York. Are there measures that we might expect to see to help small businesses recoup some of those COVID nineteen capital costs and recover from revenue? loss that was frankly due to government actions? Well, it's, it's funny, you know, we talk to small business people every day. Uh, uh, what I did is in, in my many jobs, I was a, I was an engineer all my life. I worked for Pratt & Whitney Aircraft for 22 years in the powdered metal facility up here in Clayville, New York. Um, and then I was, uh, I was a apple grower for 10 years. We had a retail store there and, uh, that's my small, small business, uh, a background and uh, I really like marketing uh, and it was exciting to me and I wish I was I was still there but um, you know yesterday well let's go back to the pandemic yeah yes government shut down everything right um, you know uh, it, it you know there was a crisis there and uh, justly so I as I probably everybody knows I almost died from COVID last year a year and a half ago I'm a lucky guy to be alive and uh, yeah. without everybody's thoughts and prayers, I got to just thank everyone. But, uh, you know, uh, government in the pandemic shut down business, hospitality industry. Uh, I don't know how anybody made it, made it through there. Um, but in, in the retail industry, uh, you know, we, we've, there's been monies out there to help out the hospitality industry. But yesterday I got a call from uh, a place called Ava Tulos. They're a, um, a, a clothing store for gentlemen, formal wear. And he was telling me that, uh, you know, they're, they're looking for any kind of help. And he was saying we're hospitality and the, the restaurant industries were helped and they were able to do different things because, you know, crisis always uh, inspires product, some other way of doing something. And, uh, you know, with the uh, uh, pickup uh, curbside delivery and things like that, most of us were able to exist, but uh, uh, his his business relied on the hospitality industry and the restaurants that he wasn't able to operate. And they're asking, "What help is there for me?" And uh, I I think that's the the the, the forgotten group here. You know, yeah, not a lot of formal events happening via Zoom, right? Absolutely. Well, people weren't going to work, and uh, weddings weren't going on, and uh, in his business, he said he lost two hundred eighty-three thousand uh, dollars alone in receipts from last year, and he doesn't know how he's going to recoup. But you mm. know, things are getting better. And what help is there for him? So we're working with our federal representatives to see what's uh, going on out there. And I know there's uh, eighty million dollars we've put into the uh, state budget 
last year for uh, you know uh, business recovery grant programs. So if anybody's interested in, in, in any information on that, please call our office and uh, we'll, we'll try to help you with, with anything there. Great. Uh, let's talk about a, a certain aspect of small businesses, agriculture. You serve on the agriculture committee. Um, you mentioned that you were in the apple production and, and retail uh, business. So you bring those real world experiences to your role on that committee. Uh, the, the legislature recently passed measures to allow production and sale of marijuana here in New York State. What do you think those long what do you think those long term implications are going to be of that action? Well, the marijuana bill, that was that was a uh, very interesting debate. It's been coming for a long time. What's you know, there's going to be opportunities there. Uh, there's going to be agricultural opportunities. I don't know how much. Uh, you know, uh, growth is going to be here. I know there's some some places already opened up marijuana, uh, uh, medical marijuana uh, grow facilities, but we're still we're still learning about this. Uh, you know, we've we've looked at Colorado and uh, all the other um, states that have opened it up, and you mm -hmm. know they talk about the tax revenue that was going to be generated, and the and the numbers weren't uh, weren't there. So you know. Working with a, you know, back to your question, working with the agricultural community, I, it's still, let's see what's going to happen. You know, there's been a lot of uh, talk in, in Ulster County, in uh, Upper Orange County, and uh, Crespo Labs on what, what they're going to do down there. But, uh, you know, it's, it's still moving slow. Um, you know, the hemp market, I don't know if that, that was going to be a, a big agricultural boom. And, that's seemed to uh, seem to stall right now, but maybe a lot of this has happened because of the pandemic. And let's see where maybe. we go from from here. Okay, let's let's stay on agricultural issues for for just a moment. Uh, last year, or earlier this year, I should say, uh, farmers received a bit of a stay on the overtime limits uh, regarding the farm labor bill. Do you think that issue is going to resurface this year? I know it's out of the legislature's hands, but is that an issue that's well, going to Well, what come I back hear, up? there isn't going to be any uh, anything looked at uh, the uh, uh, overtime uh, requirements there. You know, I wasn't very, uh, I wasn't a, uh, I didn't support this uh, farm labor bill. I, uh, I, I didn't feel that the, uh, that the uh, uh, sponsors of the bill really understood agricultural practices here here in New York State you know a lot of their uh, look was was California where the weather's mm -hmm. wonderful okay uh, you know uh, being an apple grower and uh, when that crop gets uh, gets ripe you have to get it off the trees and it didn't matter what the deal was uh, you may have two days of rain and you couldn't pick but when uh, there wasn't any rain you were working 16 hours 16 hour days. And uh, you know uh, that that uh, forty-hour work week goes straight out of the window. Yeah. You know, there's some there's some aspects of the agricultural uh, labor force that can work under a forty-hour overtime uh, situation, but it, it doesn't it doesn't pan out here here in upstate New York. Sixty hours. That was the compromise. I was you know there was a group of us not very happy with it. Uh, we talked. Uh, we we talked with uh, the with the union leaders, the uh, co -spon uh, sponsors of the bill, and they they wanted to move it. They said the bill was here for 26 years, and we're going to move it now. So, you know, uh, any input on that? But you know, a lot of things that a lot of our small businesses are agriculture. Yeah. You know, uh, there's farm to table businesses that, that deal with it. Prices will, will increase. It'll go from the uh, uh, grower and it'll be filtered down to, uh, through through to the uh, to the restauranter that uh, is, uh, is cooking the food and, and the public who's buying it. This is going to increase our, our 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 abundant food supply here on, on the cost. A piece of legislation that's currently moving through committee uh, would set a fee for the amount of carbon produced by an item. Uh, and some, 
somehow and in on your side of in 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 your conference have pointed out that uh, this carbon tax, as they're calling it, could increase the price of gasoline by some 55 cents uh, per gallon and a quart of wood uh, by $200. It would tax, um, as you know, um, it could set as much as $185 um, tax on a an item that produces for every ton of carbon that is that is produced. Um, so um, actually, no, it would increase the, the price of a quart of wood by $500. I'm sorry. Um, funds generated by this tax in the legislation would be de de dedicated to public transportation projects like New York City subways and rails. Um, what's your position on this legislation? And do you think it has any chance of passing the current session of the legislature? Well, to fund New York City uh, uh, transportation on the backs of upstate people, I don't, you know, that's just, this can't happen. Will it pass? Uh, we, I, we know it's floating around in, in committee right now. It hasn't really, uh, you know, it, uh, it hasn't got any uh, teeth, the 55 uh, cent a gallon uh, gas tax. I get emails, I, I get text messages from, from people uh, one, two o'clock in the morning complaining about, <laughs> about that, you know, and if you want to drive people out of New York, we've already uh, had a max, mass exodus of, of people here in New York and let's, uh, let's move it along even more. But you know, let's just stay in that 55 cent a gallon uh, gas tax or, uh, car, you know, gas tax, you know, they're pushing the elect electric vehicle too. So has gas in the efficiency of our our cars in is, is gas's use is less the efficiency of the uh, uh, gas automobile is is more the you know 55 cents is going to be there they're going to have to they're, they're, they're talking about per mile tax and how much you how much you use your your vehicle for for road maintenance but uh, you know the carbon tax, it's going to kill small businesses. We'll stay on the wood. I heat with wood. Uh, $500 a quart of wood. I, uh, you know, I don't think. Uh, that's just uh, on the tax side. So the this effective is on the tax price. Side. That's not uh, what you're going to pay for the quart anyways. Plus, right. So you know, the effective the 55, price would. The 55 cent a gallon to run the chainsaw and the truck and the splitters and uh, everything else you got to do. This is just uh, not obtainable. You know, the, uh, the cons of this, uh, you know, businesses claim there's going to be higher tax. Uh, this is going to discourage investment in, in, in economic growth. You know, there's going to be in uh, and there's going to be more things like that. Uh, you know, we, we have to protect our environment. Absolutely. Um, I'm an engineer and they told me when I was first elected down there, they asked me what I did. And I told them I was an engineer. They said, you're not going to fit well here in Albany. I said, why is that? Because uh, we have analytical minds. We look at things. We look at realistic. We do uh, uh, root cause analysis and, uh, and, and, and corrective action plans on things. We just don't come up with uh, an idea and just run with it. We have to have. Uh, we have to go from point A to point B and have a solution, not say, uh, you know, let's pass the bill and we'll figure it out later. Well, they're trying to pass a bill here and they're going to figure it out later and maybe it may be disastrous. You know, we have to put realistic dates and we have to be able to move along as, as we need to do it. But on the back of the pandemic, is this a good time to even be talking about this? Maybe this should be a, a left in committee and, uh, you know, talked about uh, two, three years down the road. We have a lot of recovery to do uh, before before we can even think about carbon taxes and and uh, things like that. Maybe it'll give us some time to come up with some some good concrete uh, things that we can do. And I know the some of the dates, and you know, we talked about uh, 2035 uh, for, for vehicles being uh, uh, mostly electric. I don't know how they, you know, that's gonna affect the, uh, that's gonna affect the agriculture industry uh, terribly. And I don't think you can get the torque out of these vehicles at this point. Uh, we have a whole uh, electrical grid. I see we got some guys here from the electrical uh, supply end of it on, on, on the call. 
uh, we can't even, uh, our, our, our supply lines aren't, aren't big enough to handle this if we have to charge things at home. You know, we have 200 amp entrances at your house. What's it gonna increase it to a 400 amp entrance? How much is it gonna cost the homeowner? So we really have to uh, take a good hard look at this. You know, Brian, you, you alluded to something I wanna pick up on uh, that I don't think a lot of people are, are aware. Uh, you said 2035 as a date when um, actually the, the legislation, if I'm correct, <clears throat> is by 2035, you will not be able to purchase a gas powered uh, car in New York state. And uh, in, is it 2040 or 2045? Um, the same will hold true for, for trucks. Um, is, is, is that going to continue? I mean, is that going, like you said, we don't have the infrastructure to, to support that. And to say 15 years from now that we're going to build uh, not only transition from a, a gasoline powered car to electric hydrogen or something like that and, and, and hope that the technology is going to catch up. Um, but again, we don't have the infrastructure either. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the uh, supply. Uh, we don't. We we aren't. We aren't able to produce the electricity. Uh, is it going to? Uh, it's it's there. We had a hearing last week on it, which was about nine and a half hours. A lot of questions were, were asked of uh, of a lot of uh, a lot of people and a lot of uh, uh, different disciplines here and how it's going to be done. Uh, yeah, it's moving. It's moving forward. You know, I asked. Uh, we, we had a debate 4:30 in the morning on this, and we should have. And I asked, what kind of businesses are we going to be looking to attract here in in uh, in, in New York State? Are, are, are all the high energy use businesses going to be uh, uh, be, be looking elsewhere? Uh, you know, what what what's going to happen? I I I I don't know how we're going to do this. And uh, you know, we had a meeting with with Tesla last week. Uh -huh. uh, they call the office and, uh, you know, uh, I believe there's only five uh, distributors for the for the Tesla automobile here in New York State. And they're all they're all downstate in the, in the five boroughs. And, uh, you know, they're looking at a whole different uh, business model on distribution. You know, they want to, you know, it, it wouldn't Tesla wants to be the sole distributor of their of their vehicle. Right. And uh, not not have, you know, right now you have car dealerships uh, owned privately and there wouldn't be Ford, GM, uh, Toyota having their own. They want to do something totally different. So there's a lot of different things that are coming in with this that are going to change business. They're going to change how we supply electricity. Uh, you know, one thing that was talked about and we're going off at a lot of different tangents are solar farms. Uh, this is a huge impact on upstate New York. Uh, it's going to be a huge impact on, uh, it could be a huge impact on agriculture because, you know, a lot of these uh, uh, locations they're looking at is tillable ag, ag producing property. Uh, you know, a little bit north of the Delaware County and uh, Herkimer County, uh, right now, there's a in the town of Columbia and Warren, there's a 24, 2500 acre solar farm being looked at. And I know a lot of the leases have already been accepted by landowners. And, uh, and I understand what they want to do. There's you no know, farms and uh, farmlands going out every day. But, uh, you know, what what's happened here is uh, the state is uh, taking away the local authority here, the, the local jurisdictions to, right. to make the uh, uh, to make what they want their communities to look like. But no, there's there's uh, there's solar power is going to be a huge thing. Uh, you know, we had one solar group come in and talk to us last week with a uh, with a sheep farmer, which solar works well with with the sheep industry because they okay. can graze underneath it and, and it Great. makes sense for that yeah. agriculture. But if it's uh, if it's uh, corn producing prop land or whatever, uh, soybeans, uh, anything else, uh, you know, we could be looking down the road of uh, energy producing is gonna have, could cause a food shortage, shortage for us. 
many years down the road. So, so for your, what you're saying is that for decades we've always been concerned about uh, residential development pressures on on agriculture. You're talking about solar development uh, or energy development energy. pressures yeah. on on agriculture now. So there's a lot of a lot of different. You know, when we look at these bills, we look at these situations. Uh, you really got to look at you know, you got to look at the whole, do a whole root analysis on it. Uh, oh, there's that engineer yeah, speaking engineer again. Engineer in me again. <laughs> well, here's something right up that engineer's alley, I think. Let's, let's, let's change our focus. Oh, and I should remind folks who are on the, on the call, if you have some questions, please post them over in the, in the chat area. Um, let's, let's shift our focus for a bit over to, to transportation. You serve on the transportation committee uh, in the assembly. Uh, Delaware County is one of the few counties in New York State that does not have any type of public transportation network. Uh, you, you heard me mention earlier that the, uh, the chamber uh, received a, just received a, a, a grant to uh, try to, to initiate some type of project that hopefully will change a lot of that. Um, is there assistance from your colleagues in the assembly? Uh, that we might be able to expect. To well, we were talking about something? that. That was uh, that. That really caught my my interest because this has been talked about a little bit here, here and there, and and all over. I don't know if you guys are really familiar with Fly Creek Cider Mill. Sure, I know well, Bill Bill very well. Bill's out of business. I know the place. Yeah. Uh, transportation, uh, his, his, his biggest issue with transportation, in, uh, in an old way we've talked about it, is yeah. supplying the workforce uh, in, to all the small businesses and, and, you know, and attracting uh, uh, manufacturing, small manufacturing jobs and things like that, you know, there. Uh, but, you know, my office would like to be on this uh, serve on this committee as an ad hoc type of All right. and uh, see if we can we can bring some of this back back to Albany and you know we can be right there and see where we can we can look but uh, you know the transportation has been talked about in Delaware County um, we've talked about it a lot we talked about it with the IDA route 10 um, you know we've been down by the octagon uh, farm yeah. down there and how they've uh, uh, how the state DOT is taking care of uh, maintenance on the roads. You know, we don't mean we don't fund our uh, our infrastructure very well here in New York State. We can't even manage the decline with the way we we fund it. You know, the way uh, you know some of the Route 10 infrastructure repairs were we're going to pave one side of the road and the other side of the road wasn't. Does that make sense? But um, there was more money in the infrastructure budget this year. In the transportation okay. budget for chips, the first time in eight years that that, that was increased, and there was money there for winter recovery. So we've really been working hard on this, and uh, you know that's the backbone of everything you guys do there. Uh, infrastructure brings brings people to you, yep. and uh, if the roads are bad and they can't get there, uh, there isn't anybody going to come. They're going somewhere else. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Let's talk about. Um, environmental conservation and, and all the things that you're looking at with on that committee. Uh, New York State is considering lowering the hunt, lowering the hunting age uh, to include 12 year olds as a way to encourage more participation in the sport. Uh, as you know, our county board recently supported that idea. The chamber has long supported uh, that idea. We, we see very clearly uh, the economic impact that that hunting and and shooting sports, particularly, um, have in our in our county, and certainly this time of year, the the, the fishing sports. Um, but the economic impact of hunting continues to decline, um, not only here in Delaware County but throughout New York State, and I think in part that was due to uh, the opening day being moved from. Uh, to Saturday from a Monday start. And that happened, what, about 15 years or so ago. 
Um, and a lot of our uh, lodging, a lot of our restaurants have said, you know, that's really when it started. We saw, we really saw a decline because with the opening on, on Saturday now, people come up on Friday, uh, maybe they come up Thursday night, uh, get their camp ready, uh, get settled. Uh, they go out in the woods on, on Saturday, maybe Sunday, and by Sunday afternoon, it's all tail lights heading uh, back, back home. Whereas when it was Monday, people would come up on a Saturday, spend part of Saturday, Sunday, go out in the woods on Monday, and probably because it often coincided with the Monday prior to Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. uh, would stay up here until, until Wednesday. So we, we saw a double or triple uh, of the economic impact. I know this is pie in the sky, um, but how can we get opening day of deer season moved back to a Monday start date? I'm a I'm an avid hunter. I'm an avid outdoorsman. I'm an avid fisherman. Uh, I um, I'm old enough to remember the uh, Monday start date. It was uh, careful, it was Brian. Like, uh, You're six. Brian, excuse me. Careful about the age. You're six months older than I am, so we're not <laughs> we're not going to discuss age here. That's right. <laughs> um, you know, I could, it, it was. Uh, you know, uh, I, you know, we started hunting back in the, I started hunting back in the late seventies. Uh, you know, we take uh, pheasant season was, uh, was a school holiday for all of us then. So it was, yeah. and so it was deer season on a Monday. Um, deer day. It was, it was deer day. And uh, you'd, uh, you'd see the lights going down route eight, heading south from, from Utica, bumper to bumper. Uh, there were hunters breakfasts. Uh, deer camps were opened. Um, you know, I understand it, uh, but uh, we've lost a lot of sportsmen over over the years because of uh, out migration, age. Uh -huh. I don't know. Uh, the, 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 the things have changed on that. Um, you know, we we talk about it all the time, bringing it back to Monday. I understand why we brought it to a Saturday to get more people involved. It made sense, but. Let's think about this a little bit in the Adirondacks, which I we hunt also. We have a camp, we got, you know, a deer camp up there along with another camp. Uh, Saturday is opening day, and it always has been. And uh, uh, you know, we come in on a Friday night. You'd stay all you stay all weekend, and there was guys there all weekend all the time. So uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, the 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 you know last year during COVID we saw. Uh, an increase in hunting licenses uh, sold yeah. here in New York State, which is a good thing. Uh, hopefully, we'll get more people involved with it. But I don't know how. You know, we can we can. Uh, uh, you know, I also belong to the Sportsman Caucus here in the Assembly, and uh, uh, I'll ask that question and see what we we think. Uh, you know, what what the uh, what the opinion is out there. You know, it's been talked about, but uh, you know, I. Maybe you guys can help us on what the what the uh, economic impact was was uh, was before, and maybe uh, send something out to all the chamber uh, people there and what they we're think. Happy, we, you know, we're we happy start to that partner. Way with it. Great. But, uh, you know, hunting is uh, the twelve year old. That's a, that's a good thing. You know. Uh, yeah. Uh, you know, there's hunting has gone a different different way. Uh, you know, there's there's pros and cons with it, and there's uh, but. Uh, it's still part of upstate's tradition, and uh, you know my uh, my family uh, we hunt deer, we hunt a lot of deer, and we fish trout and uh, anything uh, you know. I would love to fish to Delaware and any place we can we can go. So, well, anytime you want to come down and fish the one of the branches of the Delaware or the main stem, you tell me, and we'll we'll help arrange that. You know, one of the things that's that's come about over just the last probably the last two or three years. Uh, in, in hunting and fishing. And part of, I think, the renewed interest uh, is this idea that someone described to me as field to table. You know, there's this great interest in knowing where your food comes from. Well, what, uh, you know, particularly on the, on the part of folks who are living in urban areas, and what better way of, of 
learning about where your food is coming from and knowing about your food than going out and, and getting it yourself, um, either during hunting season or uh, during, during the different fishing seasons. Um, Brian, you mentioned you have uh, regional offices that you're up in New Hartford right now at one of your regional offices. You have another one down in, in Wallkill and in, in Orange County. So you're kind of traversing both ends of that, of that district. Uh, you have a great team uh, working, working with you. Uh, how can people connect with you and, and your staff? Uh, they can call either office. Uh, you know, you send me an email at uh, millerb at newyorknyassembly.com. Uh, .gov, I should say. There we go. But, uh, you know, uh, uh, just phone numbers, uh, 315. I got to look I gotta look at them all the time because you know how your <laughs> cell phone is. You just hit go into favorites. 315-736-3879 uh, and uh, 845 8951080. Um, but one thing we'd like to we do we 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 run a Facebook page, and uh, we we'd like to um, advertise our local businesses. We like to help everybody as as much as we can. Uh, if there's anything going on, please uh, contact the office. We'll get it on Facebook. Um, uh, you know, we like to attend as many places that that, that we can go to. Um, you know, we're here for you. Uh, like, like, uh, like I said, I was a town supervisor. I was a county legislator. I was a small business owner. I get it. You know, we have to uh, keep the dollars local. and We have to attract uh, the, the people who aren't local to where we are. You know, I think everybody's doing a great job over there. Uh, I know we got a few more minutes. Just want to talk about broadband. Yeah. Good. Broadband is a huge thing for all of us. Uh, I know that the build outs have been going going real well. Uh, and hopefully we, there's some more money. We can get some more money there. They, you know, the uh, Wireless Broadband the Naval Facility Permitting Act is uh, going to be there. You know, we're looking to, to help anything that we can do. Uh, you know, and we found during this pandemic that um, how we do business is going to change. We don't have to be in offices anymore. You know, our offices are our are, are home. Our offices are, I was a sales engineer for many years. This was my office, my tablet or my phone. And, uh, you know, we need, the, we need the broadband coverage uh, everywhere. You know, we have some rural electrical, electrical guys there. And, uh, you know, elect, the electrification uh, to a lot of uh, rural New York was uh, just, just done in 1948 in a lot of places. It wasn't that long ago. And uh, that was uh, something we needed. Now broadband has to be the next uh, electrification. And we need to find the dollars and uh, everything we can do to, to, to open this up. And we're working as hard as we can for everyone. So. Um, I'd be remiss if, if you know, we're talking about broadband and we have folks from Margaretville Tell and Dell High Tell and the Electric Co-op um, on the, uh, I'm so sorry, Delaware County Electric Cooperative on the, on the line, on the call. And that uh, Delaware County Broadband Initiative uh, that they did uh, really a great public private partnership using dollars from, uh, from the, uh, from the state has been tremendous uh, and really has reached broadband into lots of corners of the of the county that, uh, as you said, didn't have electric service 70 years ago and really have equated broadband with electric service um, from back in the 50s. But one area that we are still uh, woefully uh, short of, of expectations is cell service. You know, we talk about broadband, it's sexy, I get it. Um, and a lot of legislators just kind of assume, well, you know, we all have cell service. No, the governor not says Delaware, 97%. Not in Delaware County, not in Delaware County not, as not you Seattle well County, know. Not in, not in the Nida County, not in a lot of, lot of areas in upstate New York, cell service is uh, is is crazy. I know we're coming through, and we spend a lot of time on the phone as we're as we're uh, in, in in windshield time. 
uh, you know, I, I call it, uh, we're, we're in radio free Europe a lot of times. It's, you'd be going along and gone. Uh, cell service, uh, we're, we're still looking at that. But, you know, I, you know technology is gonna have to change a little bit here with cell service too, uh, because of our uh, topography and in, 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 in what, we, what we have through the mountains. Uh, that's, that's, a, that's a tough thing, but it's being worked on. Great. And we're working on it down here too. Yep. Um, we do have a, a, a question regarding legalized recreational marijuana. Uh, do you perceive any risks with the lack of understanding of what existing tobacco smoking policies um, apply to public cannabis consumption? I'm not quite sure if I understand the question. Well, uh, well, let me take a stab at it a little bit here. I participate in a, uh, a, a tobacco study annually, and uh, it's about a 90-minute question questionnaire we have to go through, and we, we talk about things. This was the first year they had a lot of, I think what the, what the, uh, the person in the question is asking is tobacco and marijuana-related health health issues that's why well, uh, and, and the policies that ex that exist uh, uh the power yeah but the, and how they can apply you know the policies that exist regarding uh tobacco and, and smoking and how they can apply to cannabis consumption okay but let me finish what i was talking about there Chris, did i get that right yeah, I just wanted to say, um, we know it's covered by the Clean Indoor Air Act, but we're yes. talking about like parks and, and open spaces. I'm not sure if those municipal policies are also uh, covering public marijuana. Uh, we understand it. Yes, it, yes, it is. They will, okay. they will also cover the marijuana. They'll be the same as uh, tobacco use. Those existing policies won't need to be revised to, to no, include marijuana? Not, okay. If they do, I will get a hold of you. But uh, right now, I understand that it, they'll be the same as the tobacco use. All right, perfect. Won't, Thank won't you so be much. any difference. Uh, Great. But, but go back to that survey. This was the first year they included uh, intent, in, intensively about marijuana use here. And uh, they talked about that with the health aspects. Brian, um, we got a couple minutes. Is are there things that you're working on that you want to tell everyone about? Well, there's one thing that just came up. Uh, we've been working with uh, with, with the, the college there in Delhi, which I think is very exciting. Uh, and the bill was just put in the bill drafting last night. Probably uh, we were working on it after session, seven eight o'clock at night. Is a land That's swap for for a. Uh, for a hotel to be built. Um, right you just there. made my morning. And uh, the, the legislation went in last night, Ray. Great. Um, everything's starting to move right along. Hopefully we'll see it on the floor today. That's what I understand. That's why we, we got it out there last night. Um, so and if, if you want to elaborate on it, I think it'll be uh, good if you do, but- uh, Well, what, what, the, what the college, uh, what SUNY Delhi has been, been trying to do for the last few years is initiate a, uh, a land swap between land that is owned by the College Foundation and land that's owned by the college, um, the College Association being relate, affiliated but separate from the college. Um, and uh, what that will enable them to do uh, is to um, have someone build a um, branded hotel here in in the village of, of Delhi, um, which would be a tremendous asset, uh, not only for our entire tourism industry, but I think even for our lodging um, as people come and, and get exposed uh, not everyone wants, everyone wants to stay at a, a small inn or a bed and breakfast. Uh, and uh, having, a, having a hotel here in town would be a tremendous uh, asset all across, all across Delaware County. Uh, and also certainly support the academic programs at, at the college. So do you think, is that coming to the floor? I mean, do we, is, is this a possibility that this may actually get passed during this session? Yes, it will. I can. I uh, very sure that it will get passed during this session. That's why we worked Ooh. on it last night. 
to get it to build drafting last night. We were kind of hoping it might even come to the floor today. I don't, I haven't seen the calendar yet. We have session this afternoon. So, but it, uh, uh, it, it's a local, you know, I, 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 um, pretty positive it's going to come to the floor and I hope we can get it to the floor this year. That's, Wonderful. that's, that's a huge thing we've been working on. And, uh, you know, when these things break, they break eight o'clock at night. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I think, uh, Ray said, I, I have a great staff and they, they, they were on it last night. Uh, something else we're working on there in Delhi is, uh, working with the IDA, uh, in the new mayor, Sam, um, hopefully, uh, sewer upgrades. If, what the situations are going to be. We'll be meeting with the two dairy producers uh, virtually today with, with some yep. of that. So that's, that's a big, that's a big thing for us. That's Saputo Dairy Foods and Saputo Foods and uh, Friesland Campina Domo out there yes. on, on state highway 10 uh, and doing some upgrades to the uh, wastewater line that connects those two facilities, uh, Clark companies, uh, uh, sports field specialties and the Delhi Rehabilitation and Nursing Center into the Delhi uh, Wastewater Treatment Facility. So that's more. Boy, this is great. So we, we got that. We're working on, uh, you, know, uh, you know, we did get a grant for, for some sewer upgrades when the uh, nursing facility yes. went in a few years ago. So I was very happy we could help out on that. But we got a meeting with uh, everybody today. Uh, we're just going to sit in as a uh, observer. So we've been involved with it for a while, and we'll, we'll see where we can we can take this. Uh, you know, and uh, so there's a, there's a lot of good things going on. And uh, road maintenance maintenance is always a, another thing we we work on. Uh, the Route 10 uh, uh, speed reduction down in Hamden, we've been we've been uh, trying to give some assistance to. Um, we like to do things. Uh, the yeah. more, the more you ask, we hop right in the middle of things, and uh, in, in, in we, we like to get them done. And uh, uh, you know, I always tell st staff we should be doing something else. What else can we? What else can we do? But um, let us know, and we'll see if we can help. And if we can't, we'll find out how who can help us get it done. So, so. Brian, just as, as a way of wrapping up, just tell us again, tell everyone again, how folks can get in contact uh, with you and your team. Well, you can just, you can email me at millerb at nyassembly.gov. Uh, you can call either one of the offices. Uh, New Hartford DO is 315-736-3879. Carrie will be there. And then uh, Wall Kill, it's 845-895-1080. Ann will be there. Uh, Dave's in Albany, but it's going to go to these two uh, DOs. That's where the people are local. They understand what the area is, what the lay of the land is. And, uh, you know, and if you're not in our district, if you call the office, we just take care of everybody. Right. That's the way we want to do it. If uh, you're in, uh, it could be in anybody's district, we take care of it. And then we'll just tell the assembly person or the senator here, we took care of it. This is what we did. Uh, and we, we helped everybody out. Because I got to, because my district, again, it's one town at a time. So we don't have areas, but we represent everybody. So that's that's what we like to do. So if we can help, please call. And uh, uh, the toughest thing I've found uh, being a being a, a, a supervisor or a county legislator or an assemblyman, I hate. I the toughest thing is to say I can't help. We'll exhaust every every avenue till we can say we I don't know what to do. Right. But thank you for having me. Um, call anytime. A lot of times I'll answer the phone in the office. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have a limited crew. We have a great crew, but uh, you know, and I, I and that, call and that's, back. And that's true, folks. I mean, I have called the district office, and 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 Brian answers the phone. So it's absolute. That's absolutely accurate. Brian Miller, thanks for joining us this this morning with our in our Chamber Connects program. I know we're going to see you often. Uh, 
down well, here. We got, in, a, we got a bicentennial coming up, right? We got one uh, uh, for the village of Down High. That's correct. I, think, I believe we got one in Bovina too. Bovina. I oh, in Bovina. I think. Yes. Yeah, I think they're. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to have a big celebration. I don't know if they are. It was actually just... last year, but uh, yeah. I think uh, they're planning. I th I'm not sure if they're still planning one for this year, or they postponed it another year. But. Whenever it is, not this year in Bovina, someone just posted. So okay. we're going to push that out. We're going to we're going to do Centennial Plus Two uh, next year in in Bovina, uh, and hopefully then the Meredith Dairy Fest will Dairy Mary De Meredith Dairy Fest will be back in twenty two as well. And I'm I know that you'll be coming down for uh, for that event. That's always so, a that's always a great event. Uh, I. Love being in Delaware County. Well, we love having you down here. Thank you for joining us this morning. And, and thank everyone for, for joining us. I, I would be again remiss if I didn't. I want to introduce someone to you very briefly before we all leave uh, the Delaware County Electric Cooperative. I mentioned earlier, DCEC uh, now has a, a new executive uh, a new executive there in charge, Chris Evans. Chris, why don't you just say hi and, and just 30 second elevator pitch here, Chris, put the pressure on. Oh, wow, gee, uh, well, good morning, everybody. Uh, uh, just continuing to get warm welcomes from everybody in the county, uh, really appreciate it. Uh, well, I guess I'm down to 20 seconds now. Uh, 26 <laughs> years in the business, been in several states. Uh, every place I've been has unique challenges and opportunities, rich histories, traditions. Uh, look forward to being part of the community and uh, uh, especially on the, uh, I guess, the member education side, because, you know, uh, I guess we're going to have some interesting uh, concepts and issues and discussions coming up here uh, in the next uh, few years. So uh, it's going to be a wild ride, but we can all do it together. So again, nice to meet everybody. Hope to meet you in person someday uh, is what it is. Uh, but uh, again, with a buildup from Ray like that, uh, I'm, I'm just in the shadows. So appreciate ah. it, Ray. Well, wel welcome to Delaware County, Chris. And thank, everyone, and thank you, each of you, for joining us this morning. Um, I'll see you next month for our next Chamber Connects program. Remember, at the Delaware County Chamber of Commerce, we really are. We're stronger together. Thanks, everybody. See you again soon.